coming up on MHS One. We take a look at our new daycare facility. We debate the privacy of students' social media accounts. And we give you a preview of the spring musical. And it's all coming up on MHS One. And I'm Patrick Duran, and you're watching MHS One. With the expansion of social media, there are precautions you can take to ensure that the information you post is published responsibly. Here's Jordan Hurt with the story. We are the social media generation. Instagram, I probably post like once or twice a week, and then Twitter, I average about two tweets a day. I'm on Twitter a lot, like 10 times a day. And Instagram, like maybe once every two, three days. We spend over seven and a half hours each month on social media sites alone. But has anyone ever taken the time to read the terms and conditions? No, I've never read the terms and conditions. <laughs> that's that's when you just keep clicking accept. Hidden within the terms and conditions of almost every social media site is the right to collect and sell all of your profile's contents. That's kind of scary knowing that they can sell your, like, the stuff you post. I'm not, I'm not really freaked out just because I'm not a private user, so I know that everything I tweet is open to the public. Not only can your profile be sold by the website, but colleges and employers can look at your social media profiles. There are going to be people and companies, if they see things on Twitter, they're going to go, no, we can't have you because of what you posted. To me, honestly, it's an interesting dilemma because it's, it's all about who you are and who your personality is except when it comes to making a living, you might want to adjust things a little bit to survive. It's never affected me, but I think about it. Like, I think about stuff I post before I do, because I know when it comes to like college and like work places that they're gonna check it, for sure. Knowing all this, will students change what they post? Usually just try to stay safe in the first place about it, because, I mean, they, people can use that kind of stuff against you, and you don't want to post anything that could incriminate your reputation. You're not hanging with your buddies on Twitter, honestly, if you have a lot of followers. You know, you would think your followers probably agree with you to one degree or another, but if the potential's there for outsiders to view it, then they're not necessarily part of your circle of friends. This has been Jordan Hurt reporting for me just one. Hey Patrick, have you heard about Spam a lot? What? You like a lot of Spam? No silly, it's a musical. Here's Brandon Portillo, Jacob Driggs, Jacob Whitaker, and Brandon Fangio with more on theater's production so far. Last night, theater put on its first showing of the Broadway play Spam a lot. Spam a lot is a, a musical based on Monty Python's uh, Holy Grail set in medieval times. Basically, it's the Holy Grail plus music. And they've added tons of stuff. It's hilarious, you know, musical numbers. It's awesome. Although successful on Broadway, there have been a number of hurdles the theater has faced. Yes, the original play was lewd <laughs> and, you know, adult oriented. But we've cut out a ton of curse words and made it, you know, school appropriate. There's some dicey issues that are uncomfortable for a lot of the cast members. Um, so that was a little bit of a hurdle, but we seem to have all gotten over it and we actually, those have become the most enjoyable parts of the play now, so, uh, so it's really nice. The play's next showing is tonight at 7 p.m. with plays on Saturday and Monday also. Come and see it, it's hilarious. If you come and see the show, and I hope you do, you will not regret it, it is hilarious. It's been Brandon Portillo, Brandon Fangio, Jacob Whitaker, and Jacob Driggs reporting for MHS One. Every month, teachers at McKinney High School go without $500 of spending money. So please, go to the McKinney High School website and vote for your favorite teacher now. I'm your favorite. I'm your favorite. Yo soy tu favorito. I'm your favorite. Oh yeah, I'm your favorite. Vote for me. Vote for me. Vota por mi. Vote for me. Vote for me. Even you can make a difference in a teacher's life.
Now here's Luke Waterback with sports. Thanks, Patrick. Recently, a McKinney High athlete won first place in a competitive race. Here's Brock Pitcher and Andrew Judd with the story. Aaron Giggly, 16 years old, has been fighting disabilities his entire life. He's now finally decided to make a change. Well, I started this race with the idea of letting disabled kids and adults feel the same accomplishment I did when I finished my race back in 2011. I have Scars Coalition, which is basically where some of the bones of my feet fuse together and causes a lot of pain when I'm walking. So doing the triathlon was a huge milestone in my life. Many of the participants were able to talk to Aaron. They were all excited for it. They were so glad that I was doing it. Uh, and they had a great time. The crowd of over 300 people enjoyed the overall atmosphere of the race. And we're out here is just for the safety of the public. And, uh, for, the, for the most part, the, the public was really acceptive of the, the event. It was really good. It was a good event. Aaron put many long hours into the event that paid off in the end. Lots of work calling sponsors, uh, setting up meetings with people, going places and just organizing it, but it was well worth it. The winner of the race, Corey Hale, talked about his trials while running. No matter how sore my body was, I kept going. Right now, I feel like a champion. This has been Brock Pitcher and Andrew Judd reporting for MHS1. This is halftime, 24 seconds, and this is our show. We're talking about the Super Bowl in 24 seconds. A little shot clock right here. All right, so are you ready? Let's get started. Ready? Begin. I'm going with the Broncos, and this is why. Peyton Manning has lots of offensive options, and he's throwing amazing. Also, Russell Wilson isn't getting it done and lost two of his best receivers. What about you, Preston? I'm actually going to go with the Seahawks, just because Russell Wilson is a nice young talent. Marshawn Lynch, best running back in the league. The sixth man! I don't know how you stop him. And Richard Sherman, everybody is mediocre compared to him. Oh, yeah. You're sorry. All right. One second left. And we beat, beat it. it! Yeah, all Just right. Five. If you want to see more of us, me and Preston, Go to Mainstream News and check us out on Halftime. This was Halftime with Preston Smith and Chris Garcia. Thank you. The girls' soccer team has had a pretty successful season so far. Here's Savannah Ayers with the closer look. After going three rounds deep in playoffs last year, Varsity Lionettes give their views on this upcoming season. The season's been really good. We've won three, tied two, and lost two. And I think we're looking really good to go forward. So far, our season's been really good. Everyone has been putting in a lot of effort, but we already have a lot of hurt players. Lionettes hope to do well in district play. I think districts are going to be really good because if we keep on practicing and keep on doing really good, then I feel like we can win a bunch of games. Uh, I think the districts are going to go very, very well this year. Our biggest competition will probably be Plano West because last year was a very close game. So we're going to get them this year. The girls wish to advance further into playoffs, striving to make it to state. This year for playoffs, I think that we'll probably make it and go pretty far. Last year we were regional quarterfinalists, and I'm hoping we have some of the same success we had last year. This year I think we're going to make it really far in playoffs, because last year we made it to the third round. And so we're hoping to make it to the third round or even farther than that. This has been Savannah Ayers and Connor Powers reporting for MHS1. The men's soccer team plays McKinney North tonight at home at 7.30. That's all for sports. Now back to you. Thanks, Luke. With the remodel of the new school, the daycare facility was relocated and revamped as well. Here's Sean Folgate, Cassidy Carroll, and Kevin Osborne with more. The renovations through McKinney High School have created some major changes on our campus. One of these includes the new and improved daycare center. The daycare supervisor and a student aide discussed the benefits of these renovations. I think because the classrooms are bigger, makes it a lot easier to um, have them spaced out rather than cramped in like a little area where it's a whole heck of a lot harder to get them to interact. It gives us a lot of more room to um, mingle with the kids, to talk to them, kind of just to interact rather than you can say something and all the other kids can hear it. When we were in the original building, we were one classroom and had all students ages two through five in that one room and we divided them up around the room 
for age appropriate activities. But in our new center, each age group has their own classroom. So we're able to split into individual classrooms and have the activity center that we can use for indoor play on days when we can't go outside. It's nice being able to separate children by age to have more appropriate things specifically for them in each classroom. Uh, there were lots of wonderful things about the multi-age classroom, but it is helpful for some students to be with age peers and it's helpful in organizing activities because you have specifically what you need for each age group in each classroom. We do have new furniture that is coming in and uh, nice new shelves and tables and chairs, lots of new things to kind of streamline with the rest of the building. We also picked up on the color scheme and so we've matched a lot of our furniture to that and we are getting new toys and activities because now that we are split up into three classrooms we need to have more things for the children because we're not in one room to share. Um, and we have our new playground set up where we have a bike path now for kids to be able to go around on their tricycles and a grassy area that I hope to use maybe for a garden or perhaps we'll set up some goals and play soccer. This has been Kevin Osborne, Sean Fulgate, and Cassidy Carroll reporting, reporting for, for MHS1. MHS1. Hey Mallory, have you heard of a game called Flappy Bird? Dag nabbit, I was just about to get my high score on Flappy Bird. What'd you say? Here's Dee Hawkins, Lily Pisano, and Alexis Banger with more on this Flappy Bird craze. Recently, students have mixed emotions about the newest smartphone app, Flappy Bird. The goal of this game is to avoid the pipes by tapping to flap your wings to fly. And my high score on Flappy Bird is 157. 27. I honestly do not play Flappy Bird. 28. 55. 35. 3. I get real mad when I play Flappy Birds. I cracked my phone last week because I chunked it because I was mad and I deleted it yesterday. I get really irritated because it's like you're trying to get the little bird through the pipe and the pipe is just not cooperating with the bird, which makes it difficult. I get pretty angry. It makes me say things I pretty, I'm pretty ashamed of later on. It took me like about a week, really, because, you know, I was pretty obsessed with it, so I just had to keep beating my high score. A scale from 1 to 10, probably like an 11 for frustration when you play Flappy Bird. It took me like a good three weeks to get to 28. This has been Alexis Banger, D. Hawkins, and Lily Pasana reporting for MHS1. Ask a guy with weird attire, a teacher you secretly admire, the kid who doesn't Believe in romance or a grandpa who can heartily dance. Dumb guys to ask. So many dumb guys to ask. Dumb guys to ask. So many dumb guys to ask. Someone in a different state. A guy who already has a date. Some random man who just ran by Or maybe even a construction guy Dumb guys to ask So many dumb guys to ask Dumb guys to ask So many dumb guys to ask Ask the guy who just got a year suspension or maybe the boy who you just met in detention You could ask an inanimate object and dress it up So nobody would suspect there's always the option to have no date But having one would be especially great Dumbest guys to ask So 
that's all we have for you today. For more news, visit MainstreamNews.com. And remember, if it's news, and it's at McKinney High School, it's, it's MHS1. MHS1.